Hi, I'm Mike Callahan, and welcome to this lesson from the easel. I have on the easel today a painting called The Last Days of Fall that I recently finished and I recently sold, I'm happy to report. Uh, and I want to take today as an opportunity, take this as an opportunity to show you how it is I, I design and execute a painting. This is a rather simple painting uh, of some fall foliage. I was stuck in the studio and I kept seeing all of uh, my colleagues posting on social media about the great fall foliage that they were out painting. And I was, I have to admit, I was a, a bit jealous. And I was just in, unable to get out and do any plein air painting in, in the, this fall. So I, uh, happened to be driving though and saw these trees and just thought how awesome this foliage was and I really wanted to make a painting out of that. And so in lieu of getting out there and actually going and standing next to these things and painting them, I did the next best thing. I took some photo reference and let me show you what I got. I took a, several multiple shots but there's a couple of them that I decided to work with. One, this is the main reference shot that I use, and then I use this shot kind of as a reference for the sky. Now, when I started making this painting, as I do with any painting, I like to think about how am I gonna design this painting? How do I want it to, to look? I don't wanna slavishly copy my photo reference, and I don't want to uh, you know, be constrained to keeping the elements where they particularly need to go, etc. So I, I thought about the, the brilliant orange and yellow in the foliage, and I thought, you know, it'd be kind of great to, to contrast, really bring that out and do something with some color contrast. So the first thing I thought is I'm going to make this overcast kind of gray sky a lot more violet than it actually is. So that was one of my first design decisions. And the other de major design decision that I decided was these hills in the background, although they were somewhat interesting, the way the light was shining off of them, the way that they don't have much brush on them, they have mostly dried grass, and so they're kind of white. And in a way I could contrast that with the sky as well, but I wanted to downplay them relative to the trees. So I decided to omit the second mountain that was back there that you would see in the reference. And so I'm, with those two design decisions made, I began to uh, undertake the painting. And so I executed this painting the same way that I execute most paintings. And I toned my canvas and composed my elements, made sure they were in, in interesting places and lightly drew them and sketched them onto the canvas. Um, so that's how I began this painting. And so the next thing I did is followed my general painting order. My general painting order is to paint from left to right, top to bottom, back to front. And then as I'm putting in set my values in these areas, I put them in dark to light in general. Now, none of these painting orders are, are hallowed. You don't have to follow exactly. You can, you can switch it around. Sometimes you want to paint something that is on the right before you paint the left. And sometimes you'll paint something on the bottom before the top. But in general, I follow that painting order. So the first thing I did was I painted the sky. And I love to to work some texture into my paintings. And so I found these painting spatulas not too long ago that I love to use in areas like this. They tend to leave a lot of texture. I can kind of really have some fun with the paint and get it on relatively quickly. So I painted in my sky using the painting spatula mostly. And you can even blend with those to a degree. Not too much and that's good. That's not a bad thing it leaves more texture and more interest in the sky. Then I moved into working back to front 
I moved into this back area with these this light mountain, and I generally paint sections, and I I just concentrate on a couple of values. So I mix a couple of values for the the yellowish uh, hill there, and then I mixed a looking light value for the brush. I didn't want to overemphasize that, and I put that in. Then, having finished that area, I'm ready to move forward in the painting, which is this mid-ground area back here behind the trees. And I'm going to put those in, and I'm going to get everything in that's at that level on the on the plane before I concentrate on these trees. The general temptation is, is to jump right into these because these are the most interesting things. But I wanted to get everything that was behind them painted in first, so I laid in that that back area and got everything in once again using the the two value approach and then after I get those two values in I can adjust it and go back in and modify the darks and put another value in the darks I can put another value in the lights and accomplish it that way but essentially I'm concentrating on darks and lights so then I move into the trees because they're the next thing coming forward before I finish off the foreground. And so I began to paint the trees the same way. I paint the trees, paint in the darks first, paint in the lights, then I'll go back in and put in some of the accents and the darker darks, and then the lighter lights of, of the, on the light side, the highlight highlighted leaves, which there's not a whole lot because of the way the lighting was here. After that, I can move into this foreground area of the painting. And I like to have a lot of fun with the foreground the same way I do with the sky. I don't want to overemphasize too much detail in the foreground because I want the viewer's eyes to go to the main focal point, which is this big mass of trees and then secondarily these trees here. So as I'm putting in this foreground, I'm having a lot of fun with just color, shape. I still take my two value approach, but I'll mix up several different colors and different values and intermittently put them in just because that sagebrush is kind of like that. It's, it's more chaotic in a way. And so I have fun with that. And then I put in the last little details and spots in that front area generally we'll like to make the corners, the front corners, a little bit darker, kind of create a little vignette effect to throw the, eye, the viewer's eye back into the painting. And then I'll finish it off. Give it a few days to dry, maybe a week, about a week to dry. And then I use the, the put a Gamvar uh, varnish on there because I love that stuff because you can you can varnish with it as soon as the paint is dry to the touch. And now it's ready to go to the collector.